So I'd like to get into the um, the optimal control part of calculating these trajectories. Um, so I'm wondering, basically, from how you set this up from an optical control sense and the math sense, so how did you go about... So you have your initial state, which is a L2 halo, and then you have the orbital parameters of whatever asteroid that you're going to calculate a trajectory to. So can you talk about that process of starting with that and then whatever constraints that you have and then plugging sure. it in to software in order to optimize a trajectory using low thrust. Sure, sure. So um, in terms of software, we, we use a uh, Hinaus uh, software. It's called LT2O, Low Thrust mm -hmm. Trajectory Optimizer, that we have developed since a number of years now. Okay. Uh, in terms of math, uh, the problem is, 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 um, is quite interesting. So you have, <coughs> excuse me, so you have the initial condition that is fully given. When I say initial condition, I mean three position, three velocities, well, the position vector, three-dimensional, mm -hmm. the velocity vector, three-dimensional, and the initial mass. So you have seven numbers that uh, are given at the initial time, and you have six numbers that are given at final time, which are final velocity and final position that have to match the one of the asteroid. Final mass is not given because you don't know how much propellant you will take to get there. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this optimization problem can be uh, 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 solved by using calculus of variation. In calculus of variation, you have uh, that uh, your um, uh, problem dynamics with your objective function can be mapped into the so-called two-point boundary value problem, which is a problem which you have uh, ordinary differential equations. And differently from a standard uh, initial value problem, in which the initial condition is fully given at the initial time and you can march forward in order to characterize the solution, in a two-point boundary value problem, you have that the conditions are mixed. Some of them are given at the initial time and some of, the, of them are given at final time. Moreover, the dimensionality of the problem increases because uh, instead of the seven uh, equation of motion, three for the position, three for the velocity and one for the mass, you have 14 uh, dimensional uh, problem because attached to these seven components of the state, you have seven components of the so-called of the so-called co-state or Lagrange multiplier. Mm -hmm. So vector of co-states of Lagrange or Lagrange multipliers. So at the end of the day you have 14 differential equations, 14 differential equations with seven conditions given at the initial time, six conditions given at final time, which sums up to 13, you need another condition, otherwise the problem is hill post. The other condition is given by the fact that the final mass being not specified allows you, uh, this, is, this can be proved mathematically, allows you to specify the, the value of the associated costate. Uh, co so the costate associated to the, to the final mass, lambda m, this is called lambda m, uh, has to be equal to zero. So this can be proven uh, mathematically. So at the end of the day, you have six conditions, seven conditions given at initial time, seven conditions given at final time. You have to determine the seven lambda zeros, so the seven values of the initial co-state, such that when you march forward and you integrate the 14 differential equations, the solution has to satisfy the given seven uh, final conditions. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem of the, the classic problem of finding the lambda zero in a classic uh, two-point boundary value problem. Okay. And then I'm wondering, so once you solve all these, so if I remember correctly, I think when you did a presentation at ESA, um, you said that, you know, get doing all these trajectories took somewhere around like a month and a half of uh, calculation time. Um, so I'm wondering, 
um, how you set this problem up as far as software and the computer clusters that you use in order to, to be able to do all these. So I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, the, the, key, the, key, was, uh, the key here was parallelization. So the problem could be uh, easily, I would say, parallelized because you have that each search to a given, uh, to a given target was independent from the search to the other target. Of course, they were, they were totally independent. Mm -hmm. So the key was to parallelize the process and uh, to use one processor for a given, a given target. And mm -hmm. we, we, we have in, in my group, we, we use a um, workstation made of uh, uh, AD uh, cores, 80 uh, cores, and then we, we, could, we could have a massive parallel uh, thread uh, to do this. But despite that, uh, if you want to solve the problem with uh, a quite good level of fidelity and resolution, moreover, uh, then you need quite some time because, because it, uh, it, it, it's quite heavy and you have also to do some other tricks in terms of uh, numerical continuation and, and so on and so forth. Because once you solve, once you solve a problem, for a given departure epoch and transfer time, to move to next uh, grid point, you don't start from scratch, but rather you exploit the knowledge that you have gathered uh, by solving the previous problem. And you actually use that solution as initial guess for next point. This is called numerical continuation. And we uh, massively exploited that in, in our search. Okay. And then I'm wondering kind of the fidelity of the equations of motion or the, um, the perturbation. So in the initial run, when you had around a few hundred asteroids, did you use a full fidelity um, like solar system model where you have the gravitational perturbations? No, no, because okay. in, the, in, the initial, in the initial run, I mean, we, we, we used the, the, the simple two-body problem okay. with the spacecraft and the sun. Later, we assess that, uh, I mean, in this way, you could do a, uh, a relatively, uh, relatively fast uh, uh, target uh, scanning. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the end, when we conducted the high fidelity mission analysis, we, we saw that the, the error was in the order of uh, 5% uh, in terms of uh, uh, propellant mass. Okay, and then so the high fidelity that includes, I, I would guess, all the very centers of the planets, and then solar radiation pressure, and the low exactly. thrust, obviously. And yeah, and that's it. Yeah, so uh, and restricted end body problem with all the planets, SRP, solar radiation pressure, and um, low thrust propulsion. For the case of MARGO, since it's uh, it's uh, a uh, high power. Um, mission mm. for, for a CubeSat, the area to mass ratio is, uh, is quite high and therefore the, the contribution of the SRP is relevant, cannot okay. be ignored. 